Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structure Series. This lecture is on laminate special cases, or more specifically how the ABBD matrix affects coupling for certain kinds of laminates. All right, we've seen how the ABBD matrix is the key to relating strains and curvatures to running loads and moments. But there are a number of cases, both for a single lamina or for a laminate of materials, where we actually can shortcut our analysis and make it simpler. And we're going to study that today. If we look at a single isotropic layer and write the ABBD matrix for that, we can write our terms of that, define this uh, A11 term as A, and write our running loads and moments this way. Our B matrix, we find all terms of the B matrix are zero. And what this is going to do is eliminate coupling between uh, extension or and bending. So bending doesn't cause extension of the lamina and vice versa. This is actually really good news. And a number of the cases that we're going to investigate as special cases have the same principle where our B matrix vanishes, and therefore we get uncoupled running load to strain and moment to curvature. We've got, well, running load and strains are coupled, and moments and bending uh, curvature is coupled, but running loads are not coupled with bending and vice versa. This is an important property, and this is what we're going to see for a number of the laminates we're going to study. And this term, this D term that we find, that we defined up here as the D11 term, which has ET cubed over 12 1 minus Poisson's ratio squared. This is a really important term for expressing the bending and relating bending loads to stresses. Let's look at that a little further. If we look at that D matrix a little further, we can drop back to what we learned in our Structures 1 class, or Mechanics of Materials class, where we bent a beam and we investigated the behavior that middle surface did not extend, and we evaluated that behavior as a function of the radius of curvature, and we defined our position Y, positive acting toward the center of curvature, as shown here, and we related that triangle of the length along the beam and the radius of curvature to the angle and we related that to the little ang the little uh, triangle made by the strains above the neutral axis we developed these relationships where we looked at the uh, length of any piece is the r minus y times theta looking at small beam theory we could write our deflection this way and our strain this way, we found, we developed this relation where our strain can be written as the negative of the position above the neutral axis over the radius of curvature. This is kind of an important relation, a pivotal one, for evaluating beams made of multiple materials and composites and pretty much anything else for bending. We saw that we could combine some things and write our stress as a function of that y over r ratio like this and remembering that we defined curvature as 1 over the radius of curvature we found the stress can be written as a function of the curvature we also looked at this for composites just a few lectures ago but this is what we developed for isotropic materials if we have an isotropic lamina now that was for an isotropic material where everything's isotropic and homogeneous. If we have an isotropic lamina, we saw this is our relation relating moments to curvatures. And if we focus on this first relation, if the only thing this is ex this beam is, is, is exposed to is curvature in about for the uh, that X bending, then we can we find that our moment can be written as a function of that single curvature like this. And we can write our strain or our stress as a function of that D parameter, which has bending and modulus information in it. And we can write it like this. We can relate this term, a way of writing our stress, 
to this other way of writing our stress, and we see that that D has that moment of inertia information, and it also has our E information. We're actually going to drill this, this idea down further in our next lecture when we start looking at bending of beams and shortcut ways to evaluate bending of composite beams. But this is kind of laying the groundwork for that. Okay. Now the first special case we're going to look at is when we have a single lamina that happens to be an orthotropic lamina. We're going to look at this orthotropic lamina in two ways. First, we're going to imagine that it's aligned with the body coordinates. Remember, those body coordinates of your material, of your structure, has to do with the direction of the loads. So axial loads and moments in the longitudinal direction. If your orthotropic lamina is aligned, it's called specially orthotropic. We're going to get some special properties. If it's not aligned, if the principal material direction is not aligned with that, it's called generally orthotropic. Let's look at specially orthotropic laminates first, or laminas first. So you have a single layer and it happens to be aligned with body coordinates, hence especially orthotropic. If we look at the terms of the ABBD matrix, we find that our B matrix vanishes, as we saw before for isotropic materials, which gives us uncoupled extension bending behavior. We also find that our extensions are not coupled with our shears, that's good, and our bending is not coupled with twist, that's good. Okay, because of this property, we're going to find, or we can see here, that if we only expose our beam to curvature in one direction, like curvature x, then our stresses can be written as function of just this d11 parameter. If it only is exposed to curvature y, then our stress in the y direction can be written just as a function of that d22 parameter, and so on. This is positive property, which is going to simplify analysis, and we will study this a little bit next lecture. If we have a generally orthotropic lamina, one that's not aligned with the material, uh, with the structural body coordinates, then we're going to have a different set of relationships. Now we're going to once again find that our B matrix is zero, but now, so that means extension and bending is not coupled, but we do have shear uh, shear extension coupling and bending twist coupling because this A16, A26, D16, D26 terms are all non-zero. However, we can still write, if we're exposed to only one curvature, we can still write our stresses in these manners, which is good, all because we're a single layer. Next, let's look in a single anisotropic layer. And if we have that, we're going to, again, since we have a single layer, we're going to find out the B matrix is zero, but we're going to have behavior. You'll notice there's coupling between extension and shear and between bending and twist, just like specially orthotropic laminas. So what this means is uh, generally, even though there are a lot of positive properties of using orthotropic lamina, that lamina, that orthotropic lamina, loses its benefit if you use it in a non-aligned direction because it's going to act just like an isotropic layer in that case. However, we're going to find out we still, since we're, we have a zero B matrix, our extensions and, and, uh, and bending behaviors uncoupled so we can still write our stresses in this simple way shown here. Now, if we have a, now we're going to switch now. We've been looking at single layers or lamina. Now we're going to look at the entire laminate. And first we'll look at laminates that are symmetric, which means it's like you put a mirror at the midplane and it looks the same as you look away above and below, which means that everything is found in the same order and same thicknesses and same stiffnesses as you move away from that midplane, either up or down. That's called symmetric. It has a lot of pro positive properties, one of which is that our B matrix vanishes, which once again makes our running loads and our curvatures uh, uncoupled. Running loads and moments are uncoupled, which is really positive. Okay, it's called a symmetric laminate. Now, if we have a symmetric laminate and it's constructed with multiple isotropic layers, we're going to get even more benefit 
we're going to once again find our B matrix is zero, and that's going to also eliminate that extension shear coupling and the bending twist coupling. Okay. If we have a symmetric laminate and each layer is orthotropic and aligned, which means especially orthotropic, we get even more benefits or actually similar benefits to those isotropics. We're going to find out it eliminates these shear extension terms and the bending twist terms. Once again, this is really positive. One example of this is a regular symmetric cross ply laminate. Now, a cross ply laminate is one where you have successive layers of 0, 090. All of the layers, the adjacent ones, are 0, 090. So if you're 0, you got a 90. If you got and next, you got a 0, you got a 90. 0, 90, 0, 90, one after the other for however many layers you have. That's called a cross ply laminate. And that word regular means all the thicknesses are the same. So if it's got all the same thickness as each layer, and each layer is either a 0 or a 90, and they're in succession to each other, that's called a regular symmetric cross-ply laminate. And once again, that has these properties of eliminating that extension shear coupling and bending twist coupling. If we have symmetric lamina, a symmetric laminate with multiple generally ortho orthotropic layers, which means orthotropic layers that aren't necessarily aligned with our body coordinates, then we're going to find that we have shear extension coupling and bending twist coupling. However, we still have a zero B matrix since this thing is symmetric. Okay. Now, a special subclass of this kind of laminate is called a regular symmetric angle ply laminate. And an angle ply laminate is one where every uh, adjacent layers are plus minus of the same angle. So you've got, a, if you have a plus 30, you have a minus 30, and then another plus 30, and then a minus 30, and so on. Or if there's 60, it'd be a plus minus 60 all the way through the laminate. That's called an angle ply laminate. And if they all the thickness is the same, it's called regular. And if it's symmetric, uh, then you can call it a regular symmetric angle ply laminate. Now, uh, regular symmetric angle ply laminate will have to have an odd number of plies. Since these plies are going like this, in order for it to be symmetric, you're going to have to have an odd number so the midplane occurs right at the middle of one of those plies. Okay? This also can give you pretty good shear stiffness relative to other laminates. Another class, if we have a symmetric laminate with multiple anisotropic layers, then we're going to, once again, we'll still have a zero B matrix since this is symmetric, but we are going to have shear extension coupling. Okay. All right. Now, an ant, anti so we looked at what a symmetric laminate meant. An anti-symmetric laminate is one where there is some form of symmetry, but it's not symmetric. Okay. So for example, if we have a, a angle ply laminate, so we have a plus, let's say 30 degrees, minus 30 degrees. Now for it to be symmetric, it would have been minus and then plus again. But if it's plus, minus, plus, minus, it's not symmetric, but there's some kind of relationship that's kind of like symmetric. That's called anti-symmetric. Okay. It requires symmetry of geometry, which means thickness and position, in some kind of reversal or mirror, mirror image of properties. So there are actually a number of different ways you can be anti-symmetric. In order to do this, you're going to have to have an even number of plies if adjacent plies have alternating orientation. And this is going to give us something like this. So we're going to see we do have a populated B matrix, which means we have extension bending coupling, unfortunately. But we have eliminated extension twist and bending, excuse me, extension shear and bending twist behavior. Okay. Now, an anti-symmetric cross-ply laminate is one where we have, once again, a cross-ply laminate. And it's not symmetric, but it has some symmetric-like reversal. And in this case, like two plies would be a cross-ply laminate. It's not symmetric, but 
Uh, but it's kind of like an end. It's, it's like a reversal. It's kind of like a, almost like a weird twist on symmetric. And she could call that anti-symmetric. So when we have this cross ply laminate, the a anti-symmetric cross ply laminate, we're going to find out this is eliminating our extension shear coupling and our bending twist coupling. And we're also eliminating some of the extension twist behavior, but not all of it. Okay. A regular anti-symmetric cross ply laminate. And once again, regular meaning all the same thicknesses for each ply. And if we increase more and more and more plies, the thicker that gets with more and more plies, the more that B11 term, the last remaining term of our shear, of our extension bending be, uh, coupling, will start to approach zero or so become so small as to become negligible. An anti-symmetric angle ply laminate is one where we have uh, an even number of plies, so it's not symmetric, but it's kind of otherwise symmetric, so we call it anti-symmetric. Once again, that has some positive properties. You can see here, no extension shear coupling, no bending twist coupling, and there are some eliminations of extension with certain kinds of bending in this guy, okay? If we have an unsymmetric laminate, then we're stuck with what we started with, all terms, all coupling. We can still handle that, but a lot of times we'll design for something that uh, has a little more positive properties. Now, another word you'll uh, or type of laminate you'll run into a lot in industry is called a quasi-isotropic laminate. It's one that's not isotropic, but it's kind of almost, or kind of behaves almost like an isotropic laminate. And... Uh, this term can be used to describe laminates that have the same uh, isotropic extensional stiffnesses, meaning the stiffnesses, the extensional stiffness are the same in all in-plane directions. So if the extensional stiffness is the same no matter what plane you pointed at, that can be considered quasi-isotropic, at least for extension, okay? We can also see that kind of behavior with bending if we have one where bending stiffness is the same in all directions, that also could be termed quasi-isotropic. So we see we can get quasi-isotropic behavior in an extensional manner or in a bending manner or both, depending on the properties of our laminate. So if we have a minus 60, 0, 60, do you think that will be extensionally quasi-isotropic or bendingly, and I made that word up, quasi-isotropic? So it's extensionally because you see uh, it's not bending wise because while we have a 60 and a, and a 60, the one of them is a negative, which means it's actually not acting like an isotropic material for bending. But since the 60s kind of cancel each other out, uh, it acts like extensionally. Here's another one, minus 45, 0, plus 45, 90. You can see this also would be extensionally quasi-isotropic. Now this word balanced for a balanced laminate is one where we have uh, for every negative ply there is a positive ply. Remember the angle ply was one after the other consecutive plus something minus something plus something minus something. This could be these could be anywhere on the laminate. You could have a zero up here and a zero down here or excuse me, a 30 up here and a minus 30 down here and a 45 over there and a plus 45 over here. As long as you can count and eliminate one for one, then that would be a balanced laminate. They can be either symmetric or unsymmetric and that introduces or removes other properties. Uh, they have no shear extension coupling and they will have no bending extension coupling if they're symmetric about the mid plane, but bend twist coupling may exist. And here are some examples of that. These pictures are uh, one of those pictures out of the internet, and the other one I believe is out of Jones. Maybe both of these are out of the internet. Here's another example of one. If you look at this, we've got a plus 30 and minus 30, plus 60, minus 60, minus 45, and a plus 45, but they're not symmetric. Okay, so angle ply, remember, means that the adjacent plies are one after the other, plus, minus, plus, minus. Balance means we've got one plus for every minus, but they're not necessarily 
consecutive. Okay? Uh, except in a balanced laminate, we can't have zeros and 90s. It's just the angle plies that need to cancel each other out. A hybrid laminate, that word is given to one that uses different materials and different plies, and we need to make sure that the, the materials are compatible if they're going to be bonded together, right? Often they will be the same, different fibers, but the same matrix in order to ensure that they work together. So let's play a little game here. Let's name this laminate. Think about that for a minute. Stop the video if you need to. And then if you think about it, you'll recognize that as a symmetric laminate. How about this guy? Is this symmetric? Sure. It's a symmetric cross ply. It's symmetric and it's a cross ply because it's 0, 90, 0, 90, 0, 90 consecutively. How about this guy here? Well, doesn't look like it's symmetric or anti-symmetric, but you'll notice it's balanced, right? We've got a plus for every minus and it happens to be an angle ply since you got a plus minus and a plus minus. How about this one here? If you think about that, you should find that's balanced and anti-symmetric. This one here, think about that, and we see this is true. So that's just a little dive into those ideas. Now these ideas are yet in my book as of, uh, what is this, almost March of 2023. I will probably be adding some of that in future editions. If you want more on that, you can take a look at Jones. He does a good job of discussing some of that. Enjoy.